Welcome to PNN Plaza Homes YouTube channel. I am Haruka Haze from Plaza Homes. In Japan, foreigners can purchase real estate without restrictions. Since loan interest rates in Japan remain low compared to other countries, many of our foreign clients who contact us choose to take out a Japanese mortgage loan. Today, we will provide detailed information on how to purchase real estate using a mortgage loan for foreigners who are looking to take out a mortgage. We regularly provide valuable information about real estate in Japan. Please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell button to get notifications of our upcoming videos. Now, let's take a look at how to get a housing loan in Japan. Today, we have Mr. Kenji Kubo, General Manager from Buy and Sell Division. Hello, Mr. Kubo. Hello, everyone. My name is Kenji Kubo. We provide a series of support services for clients purchasing a home using a mortgage loan. In order to purchase the desirable real estate using a mortgage loan, a smooth process is required to find out and apply for a loan at the financial institution. That means that the client's requirements confirm the financial plan and obtain the prospect of loan approval all in parallel with the real estate purchase application. We summarize what you want to know in advance if you are considering taking out a mortgage loan. We will explain in detail who can borrow a mortgage loan in Japan, how much you can borrow, and what kind of repayment plan you should choose. I've divided my presentation into five main parts. First, housing loan application process. Second, eligibility and affordability. Third, loan repayment structure and fees. Fourth, target properties. And lastly, we will look at housing loan life insurance and housing loan tax relief. Let's start with the first topic, application process. Let me briefly explain about the loan types. There are two types of loan, housing loan and property investment loan. Housing loan is for main home purpose buying, so that you can get low interest rate as well as some tax benefit. On the other hand, property investment loan is for investment purpose, such as buy and renting out to get rental income. Investment loan interest rate is higher than the housing loan, and loan to value ratio tends to be lower than the housing loan. Today, I would like to concentrate on housing loan. Now let me turn to the main issue. This diagram shows housing loan application process, starting from selecting a bank, applying for pre-approval, and moving on to official approval process. Once the loan application is successfully approved, the loan agreement is arranged with the bank. On completion, the bank gives you a loan to finalize the property transaction, and the loan repayment will start normally in the following month of completion. In this slide, I would like to elaborate regarding the difference between housing loan pre-approval and official approval. Let's assume you find a right property to buy and make an offer. Normally, a pre-approval letter issued by a bank is required in order to officially negotiate with the seller side. The offer with pre-approval could make the seller highly motivated to consider your offer, whereas without having a pre-approval, your offer is not binding with the seller, because of uncertainty and risk of loan cancellation. This is the reason that I would like to emphasize the importance of gaining a pre-approval. As long as getting a decent pre-approval, it is likely leading to official approval. If you are pre-approved, but your official approval is declined, or you might be offered less than what you applied for, it may be because a lender has concerns regarding any of the factors listed on the slide, namely mortgage valuation failure, your health problem, and individual credit issues, etc. Next topic is eligibility and affordability. First of all, I would like to give you an overview of who can borrow. As you can see here, having a Japanese residency and working to pay tax in Japan are crucial points. Some banks require a certain amount of annual income. If you are a married couple, you may like to calculate your affordability based on two combined incomes. Ability to understand Japanese is also important. There are some English language friendly banks, but some banks require Japanese comprehension to be able to understand the loan agreement contents, etc. Purpose of purchase must be for own residence, not buy to let investment purpose. Lastly about the age limits. This depends on lenders, but generally the maximum age at the end of the loan term should be 79 years old, or your retirement age. So, if you are looking to get the longest loan term, which is normally 35 years, you should be under 44 years old. Next question is, how much can you borrow? The lenders normally offer around 80% of the sales price, but if you have a permanent residency status, 100% or even 110%, including housing loan-related expenses, may be possible. 
right hand side picture shows how many times your salary can you borrow for a housing loan. It would be typically six and a half times, based on a simple income multiple, and it could be said that, you shouldn't pay more than 35% of your monthly gross income on mortgage payments, but in reality, it's much more complex. So, it is important you always get a specific quote from the lender, and double check the price yourself, before acting on the information. In this slide, let me try to simulate how much you can borrow based on the assumptions. Let's say the property price is 50 million Japanese yen, annual income 8 million yen, and loan length is 35 years. In this case, the annual repayment is 2.8 million Japanese yen, which is 35% of annual income of 8 million yen. 2.8 million yen is divided into 12 months to determine the monthly repayment, which is 233,300 yen. You may judge how this monthly repayment can be feasible and affordable for you. The rest simulations on the slide is a bit complicated, so I am not going into details, but it shows the affordable loan amount by using the said multiplayer of six and a half times of your annual income, in this case, approximately 52.7 million Japanese yen could be affordable, based on the given assumptions, which can cover the price of property you are buying. This slide shows some banks in Japan offering a housing loan. As you can see, there are a variety of housing loan lenders. Starting with mega banks such as SMBC and MUFG, the English-friendly banks in the middle, namely SMBC Trust Bank, Prestia and Shinsei Bank, could be a good option for foreign buyers. Digital banks are also getting common to fasten the assessment process. Again, each lender uses slightly different method and processes of the assessment, so they are growing more competitive to win the housing loan business. Next, how does the housing loan screening work? In order to fully establish how much you can afford for a housing loan, a bank needs to analyze particular affordability criteria in greater detail. During your initial assessment, especially not only your name, address, date of birth, but also history of credit and loan applications, contract and repayment status, outstanding loans and payment arrears, etc. If a bank has concerns regarding any of the factors I just mentioned, your loan application may be declined, or you might be offered less than what you applied for. Next, we talk about loan repayment structure and fees. I'll begin by housing loan interest rates. Basically, there are two types of interest rate, floating rate and fixed rate. Firstly, the floating rate is adjusted at various periods, based on market rate fluctuations. On the other hand, the fixed rate remains steady during the length of your loan. This chart shows the historical loan interest rate in Japan, since 1984. The red line indicates floating rate, and blue line is 10 years fixed rate, and green one is 3 years fixed rate, respectively. As you can see, the floating rate in red hit over 8%, in around 1990, but it decreased after the collapse of bubble economy. I would like to highlight that the interest rates have remained at historically low levels, since 1999. Let's now look at floating interest rate. The typical floating rates could be from 0.475% and 0.725%, depending upon the borrower's affordability and mortgage valuation results. The floating rate is lower than fixed interest rate. There are two different repayment plans for a housing loan. The table on the slide shows the repayment structure, consisting of principal and interest repayment. First, the left-hand side shows equal repayment of principal and interest. The vertical axis indicates monthly loan repayment amount, and the horizontal axis indicates length of loan period. As you can see, the monthly payment amount is the same, whereas if you look at the payment structure, the majority of your payment pays a larger proportion of interest in the earlier stages of your loan. The proportion of interest to principal changes over the life of housing loan. On the other hand, if you look at the right-hand side, it shows equal repayment of principal method. This shows the proportion of principal in the repayment is the same, but the amount of principal you pay is larger than the other plan on the left-hand side. Since you pay more principal in the earlier stage, the less interest you will be paying towards the end of the loan life, because you make a principal payment, which leads to reducing the amount of loan that you're due to pay back. This slide explains about the repayment protection scheme, called 5 years, and 125% rule, under the floating interest rate. This scheme is aiming to protect borrowers, against a sudden increase in the interest rate, and repayment amount. 5 years rule is designed to remain the same monthly repayment amount for 5 years, in case of the interest rate going up. In 6 years time, the repayment amount will be capped no more than 125%, even if the increase is more than 125%. If you look at the right-hand side diagram, and assuming the interest rate goes up by twice or three times more, but the rate and repayment amount are capped, 
and it shouldn't increase more than 125%. But please bear in mind that the unpaid repayment amount is not exempted and still required to pay in the end of loan term. Now let me briefly summarize about the floating rate payment plans by explaining the pros and cons. First one was equal repayment of principal and interest. Pros, monthly repayments are stable and 5-year and 125% rule should be applicable. Cons, total repayments are high. Second one is equal repayment of principal. Pros, total repayments are low. Cons, initial repayments are high, 5 years and 125% rule are not applicable. Now, let's move on to fixed interest rate. As you can see, there are a variety of fixed interest rates, from 2 years to 10 years, and even 35 years loan duration. The interest rates are still low, between 1.05% and 1.94%, according to SMBC website, but higher than the floating rates we just discussed. One of the benefits of fixed interest rate is that repayment amount is the same, despite of an increase in the interest rate, therefore, it could be an insurance against the risk of interest rate fluctuations. On the contrary, when the interest rates are falling down, you may consider refinancing, to get better rate, and save the total repayment amount. Let me just run through the key points again. First, floating rates equals borrowers bear the risk of interest rate fluctuations. On the contrary, fixed rate equals bank bears the risk of interest rate fluctuations. According to statistics, it says approximately 70% of housing loan borrowers are choosing a floating rate, but I may argue with this, because of tendency of increase in the interest rate due to an inflation, there may be more borrowers who may consider choosing a fixed interest rate. In fact, some banks offer mixed interest rate plan, consisting of both floating and fixed interest rate. For instance, 50% of loan amount is under floating rate, and the other 50% is under fixed rate, which may minimize the risk against interest rate fluctuations. Which one is best for you? If you would like to borrow as much as you can and can take a risk, floating rates may be chosen. On the other hand, fixed rates may be suitable, if you don't want to take a risk, and prefer to stick to the stable repayments. Again, it is important to choose an interest rate type that suits your life plan, and make sure to set a loan within your affordability. Next subject is bank loan fees. The fee is often 2.2% of the loan amount you borrow. For instance, if you borrow 50 million Japanese yen, 1.1 million yen would be the bank fee. You may feel 2.2% may be high, and you may wish to save your down payment. There are banks that could give you a fee exclusive or inclusive option. Fee inclusive interest rate, which is around 0.2%, on top of the normal interest rate, but you could save initial down payment, depending on your preference and financial situation. Perhaps you can check with the bank, if they have such an option of interest rate structure, exclusive or inclusive bank loan fees. Loan for purchase expenses. Next subject I would like to explain is, if a housing loan covers the purchase expenses. Purchase expenses are roughly estimated around 6-7% to of the purchase price, including agency fees, bank fees, and registration tax, etc. This may be suitable for those who are looking to save the down payment, however, there are some conditions, for example, applicable to mainly permanent residence visa holders. A detailed list of expenses is required, so you should ask your agent to get these estimation, prior to applying for a loan. In case you are looking to borrow renovation costs, the quotation is requested to submit to the bank as well. On completion, the evidence of payment for those expenses is required, because the lenders would need to confirm, if the loan amount is adequately used for the subject property purchase expenses, not for other purposes. Last point is that the interest rates tend to be higher. This loan option could offer you to save your down payment, but again, please bear in mind that loan amount is bigger, and interest rate could be higher, than the normal, so you are advised to arrange within your affordability. This slide shows required documents for each step of the housing loan process, starting with pre-approval, official approval, and loan contract purposes. As you can see, your identification and income documents are required, for both pre- and official loan approval purpose. For the official approval purpose, certificates from ward office are required. By loan contract, you are required to get your seal registered at the ward office, so please prepare for that. Please note that the required documents are different between the banks, so please double check with your agent and bankers. Next, I am talking about housing loan target property types. In Japan freehold property transactions are common. Residential apartments, detached houses, and land to build a new house, can be target properties for the housing loan. The property's condition can be subject to housing loan valuation, undertaken by banks. 
property conditions such as older properties, leasehold properties and houses with rental units may result in down valuation or shorter amortization loan period. This down valuations could be problematic, in case a house sale has already progressed. In case of down valuations, perhaps you may cancel the sales contract by using loan cancellation, or might be able to prepare more down payment to proceed with the sale. Buy a property with having an existing housing loan. This talk is particularly relevant to those of you who are looking to buy a new home, without paying off the current housing loan, which could be the least stressful way, because you can take your time, and choose a new home, without the pressure of needing to sell your old one. This slide introduces you, to take another housing loan, to allow you to buy a new home, without paying off the existing housing loan. Sony Bank, for instance, would offer such housing loan, as long as fulfilling the following requirements. Firstly, you are required to have an intention to sell the current residence, after purchasing a new residence. Secondly, the assessment of your current home valuation is undertaken. If the current outstanding loan balance is less than 90% of the home assessment valuation. For example, if the current home is valued at 50 million Japanese yen, and outstanding loan balance is 40 million yen, it should be eligible because outstanding loan amount is less than 90% of valuation result. Lastly, you are required to exchange an agency agreement to sell your current home. In conclusion, you could have multiple housing loan at once, as long as the repayment ability matches to the lender's criteria, but please make sure you can arrange such double housing loans within your affordability. Next, we consider rental property and housing loan. You may feel slightly unusual, because a property investment purpose shouldn't be applicable to a housing loan, as I mentioned earlier. However, there may be some cases that allow you to get a housing loan, under the specific conditions, as illustrated on the slide. For instance, main home space must be over 50% of the entire building. The entire building must be used as residential purpose. As the pictures show, you may be living on the ground floor, and rent out the units on the second floor to residential purpose tenants. This could be beneficial because the part of loan repayments can be covered by the rental income from the property, however, I would have to say that there is a likelihood that the bank's valuation for these rental properties tend to be lower, in other words you may be requested to prepare more down payment. Furthermore, this sort of rental properties are quite rare to find on the second-hand market, and you may be advised to buy a land and get consultation with a home builder, bank, and tax accountant, to fully comply with the requirements. Secondly, a house with a shop. Please be advised that this is a different story from what I explained. This type, you can rent out the part of your own residence, but this time, the shop cannot be rented out, and must be your own use. As illustrated on the picture, you run your business on the ground, and live on the upper levels. Your business may be a clinic, or a hair salon, etc. Again, this can be achievable under the certain circumstances, such as 50% of the building space must be home space, construction costs for main home only should be covered by housing loan, etc. Importantly, you will be requested to check the zoning and other regulations in the area, to make sure your business can be operated properly, without any restrictions and laws. So please make sure you work closely with your home builder, agent, bank, and a tax accountant, before planning your project. Okay, this is final part of housing loan. Regarding life insurance and tax relief. Housing loan life insurance, called Danchen. The majority of housing loan requires for a buyer, to get a housing loan life insurance, called Danchen. The most beneficial point of Danchen is that, the insurance company will pay out your outstanding loan, in the event of death, or severe disability. The Danchen fee is normally interest rate inclusive, so no extra insurance fees payable. Moreover, in the event of your death, Danchen ensures that your dependents can continuously be staying and living at the home, without being evicted. Danchen has variety of types, covering not only death, but also personalized housing loan protection insurance, designed to fit your needs, including accidental injury and critical illness, covering specific health conditions such as a stroke, some types of cancer, and heart attacks, etc. The costs for such personalized insurance will vary, based on which insurance you choose, and they are likely adding to the loan interest rate, say 0.1% for critical illness insurance, on top of the standard interest rate. Importantly though, you are required to be healthy to be able to get a Danchen approval, otherwise your loan application may be rejected. If you have experienced health problems during a certain period in the past, this may be likely to affect your ability to get Danchen life insurance. There may be other medical exclusions and conditions, so please check carefully, before taking out a policy, if you have any concern about your health. Housing Loan Tax Deduction This is a beneficial relief for home buyers to reduce their income tax amount, by taking a housing loan. 
basically 0.7% of the year-end loan balance is deductible from income tax. As the table on the slide indicates, buying a second-hand property from an individual seller, up to 20 million Japanese yen outstanding housing loan, multiplied by 0.7%, which is 140,000 Japanese yen, should be deductible from your income tax. There are other conditions to qualify for the tax deduction. It must be your main home purchase. Subject property's registered floor area should be over 40 or 50 square meters. In case the subject property is old, an earthquake resistance certificate should be required. Borrower's annual income should be no more than 20 million Japanese yen, or 10 million yen, if the property's registered floor area is over 40 square meters. Please check with your agent and tax accountant how the property and yourself are eligible to the tax reduction conditions. This is the end of main body of my presentation. Next, I would like to introduce you my company, Plaza Homes. We are specialized in all aspects of buying, selling and renting a property for both Japanese and foreign clients. Over 50 years, we have built up a strong reputation as one of the most trusted property experts in Tokyo, as well as providing comprehensive property management services and expatriate support business throughout the country. We are putting a lot of effort into introducing property information and many interesting articles relating to real estate on our website. When you search for Real Estate Tokyo on Google, it is ranked first and we receive many inquiries from customers around the world. On your property search, you can start by clicking your favorite area, type of property, budget and so on. For property information of condominium, it is linked rental market in the same building. Here you can see, guidance for buying, costs and taxes, loan information may be checked as well. We are all bilingual agents and have deep knowledge of how your local market works. We are honest, transparent, and are enthusiastic about maximizing our customers' satisfaction. Online viewings, valuation, negotiation on conditions, cost simulations, legal supports and more, are available to offer. In order to achieve smoother transactions for overseas clients, we work with an escrow company to be able to receive fund from overseas's account into a secured trust bank account in Japan. We also work closely with many bilingual experts such as judicial scriveners, lawyers and tax accountant and so on. That's all for how to get a housing loan in Japan. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. The interest rates and loan terms of financial institutions are regularly changing, so please feel free to contact us if you have any concerns and questions. We offer a wide variety of properties for rent and sell, and provide property information in English. If you are interested in renting, leasing, buying, or selling real estate in Japan or in Tokyo, please check our website. We also run a website called Japan Living Guide, which provides living information. Thank you so much for watching. If you found today's video useful, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. Please hit the little bell button as well to get notifications of our upcoming videos. If you have any questions or thoughts, we would love to hear them in the comments too. See you next time!